All right. Got a little Hrum Gesellschaft tin German firearm here. The Room, as I like to call it, RG10. Unboxing it. See what this bad boy looks like. Okay, this is a 19. What does that say? 62? Or 52? 62. It's a 1962 right here. RG10. Wow. Pretty good condition. This little guy. Let's see what the other side looks like. A little bit more. Oh, yeah, that's official here made in Germany made in Germany huh wow this is a little 22 short as you can see it's not loaded all right let's go check out some of the features here all right we got the little Rome RG10 here. Checking out some of the features. This is in 22 short. Alright. This is a 22 caliber round. Short. Okay, this is, I'll show you the difference. I've got a hollow point here. Uh, this is a 22 LR or 22 long rifle. He's got a little hollow point there. 22. And look, this is the difference in size, difference in height. So the 22 shorts are itty bitty guys. Alright, so pretty excited about this. This is an original Saturday night special. Okay. That's uh, where the term came from. These little throwaway guns here when these guns were sold new back in the 50s brand new they were sold for about 13 bucks okay Can you imagine going to the gun store today and picking up a pistol any type of revolver for 13 dollars they call these two dollar pistols this is the most dangerous handgun in the world and Supposedly, it's not even really dangerous for the person on the other side getting shot at. It's more dangerous for the person shooting it <laughs> because uh, these things are notorious for what they call blowback. You uh, shoot around, supposedly, and uh, the round gets shaved off the barrel here and blows back. Now, this is how you load these little guys. There's this little thing right here. Comes down. Now you can see, I'll go ahead and show you. You can see two, three, four, five, oops, six, not loaded. So the chamber here does not come out, all right? So I thought that was pretty cool. You have to load this little guy like this. Put it in there like that. And then you can't get the round out by simply tilting it back, which sometimes you can get the shells out after you fire the round. There's a little hole right here. And you unscrew this little rod right here underneath the barrel. You put that rod right here this little opening and you simply push it's like an injector rod it ejects the shell after the round has been fired pretty cool stuff here so this particular weapon like I said was made in 1962 the one that I'm holding in my hand each one of these has a little stamp on it this same type of gun that was used in the assassination attempt of President Ronald Reagan 
Ronald Reagan was not killed, but he was seriously injured. I believe he had a punctured lung, a uh, broken rib, and uh, he recovered pretty quickly, but it wasn't a direct shot. The guy who shot at him, John Hinckley Jr., I believe it was, shot at him, I think, in 1981 in Washington somewhere. And I believe when he shot, wow, uh, caught the door and the ricochet, the bullet ricocheted off the door of the limousine. Ding! He got the president. So I believe uh, John Hinckley Jr. fired off like six shots right under two seconds, I think it was. Bam, 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 bam. bam. And four people were hit. A guy by the name of Brady, I believe a police officer, and someone else. Now, I think Brady was a press secretary, if I'm not mistaken. That man was paralyzed by these little... It blows my mind still to this day, thinking that these little rounds right here the paralyzing man out of a gun like this. It's a junk throwaway. Most people don't want this. See, these types of guns right here, the RG-10s, I believe officially Reagan was shot at with an RG-14. I've got an RG-10, so uh, it's like his little brother, the original here. Um, I like this guy. He He's getting a bad rap, I think, because his big brother. But anyways, the RG-14... After it was fired, it hit Brady. They made the uh, importation of these guns illegal from Germany to the United States. In 1968, the 1968 Gun Control Act was put into uh, operation, I guess you would call put into place because of this weapon right here. So it's a little piece of American history. I think the company had to move to like Miami or something like that. And uh, in 1986, the company shut down. Okay. So, I mean, from 81 to 86, not much time before these little guys were gone. Yeah. So these guns are the reason for the Gun Control Act of 1968. They were very easily accessible to criminals because of the cheap price. These are made out of a, a pretty cheap metal. Zinc and alloy, they call it pot metal. Uh, I guess, you know, just true. Now, it looks pretty nice. The one I'm holding here is actually in really good condition. Okay, I'll tell you a little bit more about that here in a little bit. But uh, this little guy, the hammer on it here goes right back. Now, the trigger pull, though, when you're pulling the trigger... There is a lot of resistance. You really got to pull down. Now, I'm not going to dry fire this thing because, as a lot of you may know, you're never supposed to dry fire a rim fire weapon. You know, it could damage your firing pin and yada, yada, yada. So, anyways, a little 22 caliber, I call it a belly gun. You know, this isn't made for shooting long distances. Yeah, I can shoot long distances, just like any weapon. A slingshot can shoot long distances. You know, this isn't made for uh, really anything impressive. As far as a defensive standpoint goes, this would be like what you would want your grandmother to carry in her purse. Okay. Or uh, your wife to have in her nightstand whenever you're away. You know. Maybe even mow in the yard these days. Who knows? But uh, this is what they call a little belly gun. Some people call it a belly gun. Some people call it a boot gun. The reason it's called a Saturday Night Special is because it's kind of like, you know, here. Special, cheap, easily affordable, you know, run-of-the-mill thing. And a lot of people call this a throwaway. You know, a pop and drop. You pretty much pop somebody with it and drop it. You know, that's what criminals would do. You know, pop and drop. They pop somebody with a gun like this, drop it down. You know. Now, 
it's got some little pins in here. Bing, 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 bing. And it's kind of put together like uh, a cap gun, you know, the old school cap guns we would use as kids. Now, there are a couple features on here that might make your RG10 run a little bit. So I'll tell you about them. Uh, number one, obviously, keep your gun clean. My little weapon here came with the original in the box. It's still in the box. It's got the little cleaning brush here. I happen to have some gun oil and stuff, so I'm going to shine this baby up tonight or tomorrow or one, you know, in the days ahead. Who knows? So keep your weapon clean, well oiled. And then uh, a lot of people complain because the trigger pull is so hard. Oh, so hard to pull the trigger in double action. This is a double action. You see, bing, 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 how the hammer goes back. That's double action. And this is called single action. Okay. You can put it back and you see how the trigger is stuck back there. So you have less to pull and it makes the gun more accurate. You know, there's two reasons for this. One because it takes a lot of that pressure out. Well, every time you pull, you know, you're kind of moving moving the gun a little bit off the target a little bit. But once you got that hammer all the way back already, you know, and all you have to do is just, the gun is more steel, so it's more accurate. All right, so anyways, moving on. You don't want the trigger pull to be so hard. There's a screw right here. You tweak it one way, it makes the trigger tighter. If you tweak it the other way, Make sure you got the right size screwdriver and the right screw because you don't want to strip out anything. It makes the trigger looser. So you don't have to have a, a tight trigger on these. Also, people complain about uh, the timing on these things. I fired my gun six rounds and it only, it only fired once. I, I pulled the trigger six times and it only fired one time or it only fired five times or four times because there's a timing here in the mist where it's mistiming the cylinder. Well, a way you can fix that is if you tweak this little screw right here on the bottom, the butt of the gun, the bottom right there. You unscrew this, you can tighten or loosen the hammer with this little screw right here, okay? So if you work this screw, okay, in cooperation with this screw right here, your hammer and your trigger will function a lot easier. So like I said, this isn't for long distance shooting. This is for, you know, your grandmother put in her purse. If an attacker comes, God forbid, if an attacker comes up on her, she can pull this little guy out, you know, bing, bing, right in the belly a couple times. Hopefully, the attacker will get the message and run away. You know, this isn't supposed to be like one of them huge, you know, 50 cal, you know, 40 cal, 50 cal, 44. It's not one of the bigger rounds. Obviously, this is one of the more smaller rounds. This is one of the smallest rounds available, actually, especially the shorts. Okay, so now... Enough about the history and all the mumbo jumbo. Saturday night special, you got it. The Room Gesselschaft 10. Rome. All right. So here's a story about this particular piece. There was a man who um, kept a great home. His name was Mr. Barry. He had a wife, Mrs. Barry. It's funny how that works. Anyways, Mr. Barry kept impeccable items, really cool guns and everything like that. Well, he passed away. He left this gun to his wife. His wife had this gun in her nightstand. Okay, in her nightstand drawer. Miss Barry just kept it. Mrs. Excuse me, Mrs. Barry just kept this thing. Now I guess I could call it Miss Barry. Miss Barry kept this thing right there by her uh, bed at all times. And so it was given in that same box that I got today. She passed away. My mother uh, was in charge of the estate. 
She sold the gun to somebody and the somebody sold that gun to me. And now I hold Mr. Barry's 1962. He may have bought this in 1962, who knows? But I'm gonna say it's in very good condition. I smelled of it. Smells like it might have been fired a couple times. The brush here has a little bit of a, I mean, you smell gun oil on from years ago. Yeah, you smell the gun oil on this. I mean, you can tell he's cleaned this gun maybe once, maybe he's fired it once and cleaned it once. Well, I mean, you, you see how, you know, this thing isn't frayed or anything after all this time. Now, I don't know if you bought it in the 70s, but it's a 1962. Really cool little piece. Maybe one day I'll uh, take this thing out to the range. I doubt it. Uh, you know, if I ever fire this thing, it'll probably be once or twice. You know, I'll probably keep these. I got I got some bullets here. He's got, he left a whole whole bunch of bullets here. He left a whole bunch of rounds for me. You know, uh, the old timer dude there. Man, these are... These are in really good condition, these rounds here. Remington High Speed 50 rimfire cartridges, but these here are actually kind of a little muggy, some dirty ammo. So this would be the real test of time, firing an unclean gun with dirty ammo. <laughs> it's probably what I'll do just to see what happens. Anyways, this most dangerous revolver in the world, most dangerous gun in the world, Right here, Saturday night special. A little Saturday night special here. 22 short caliber, made in Germany. What a piece of work. I'm really excited to test this thing out. Hopefully, y'all have a good night and God bless.